What's going on, everybody? Yeah, yeah, good evening. Um, yeah, a little, little cooler this week. It is. I had to bust my, my jacket out. Yeah, the, I, I knew it's like, you yeah, probably didn't have a heater on there yet. I, I'm going to I'm gonna be sure I wear sleeves tonight, which, like, as I told you, we had our, well, what turned out to be our last T-ball game. We, oh, really? We got, we, we fell, fell to the Blue Jays tonight, I believe was the name of the team. Dang. We lost by one run, and I mean, you could probably say this about every T-ball game that's ever played anywhere, but we shouldn't have lost. Like, <laughs> if we could have just, but it's it's so hard to get four, five, and six year olds to to listen and pay attention, and yeah, yeah, lost by one run. So yeah, I was already in kind of my cold weather gear because we just got done playing like an hour ago. And gotcha. So yeah, T-ball season comes to an end, and I was like, oh, I'm just looking forward to having nights at home. Yeah, no, my wife was like, well, actually. Our son had his first basketball practice tonight, but he had to miss it because we had T-ball. <laughs> okay, so you ain't going to have nice. So she's like, so yeah, next, which I think that's just one night a week. It's just Thursday nights, apparently. We have uh, t- or, uh, basketball now. So See, we, I, Levi starts Saturday. Okay. So, yeah, so, so he's going to play. We'll be in the same league, so yeah. Yeah, which he was like, his first practice Saturday, and Marcy said he was like, today – She's like, all right, we got your schedule. We'll done sign him up, and he's been wanting to play. And now she said today, he was like, I don't think I want to play. Oh. And it's like, no, nope, too late. Well, that's, mm-hmm. a, that's five-year-olds for you. They just, yeah. That's like I'll ask our kids before the game. It's like, do y'all want to keep playing? You know, yeah, because it's win or go home. And some of them are like, no. Yeah. Like, Wrong answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's try it again. But yep. yeah. Right. We are. And, hey, and tonight we're drinking. We got the stuff here. Tribute to Gary. Yeah, got got the Gary. The, yeah, we're drinking the Gary. The sun dropping early times. So, yep, it's not bad. No, it's not bad at all. Um, say neither one of us are, are primarily mixers on our bourbon, but yeah, uh, if I'm gonna drink a mixed bourbon drink, I might as well be the Gary. That's um, right. I, I think like if I'm gonna mix, that may be my go-to from now on. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad, and I and I feel we need to give a toast tonight, man. Again, now to. To Paw Paw Pee Wee. Yes. Um, you tell yeah, a little bit about him. Well, I, right. We were, I was, another funeral, an, another week, another funeral. Uh, my, uh, my grandfather would have been 100 on Halloween, and he died three days short. Which, you know, we were talking, I don't remember if I had this conversation with you last night. He died on the 28th. Do you know when Paw Paw Curtis died? No. Nah. I think officially his date of death is the 27th. Oh, really? When, when he had his, his episode blood clot, yeah, yeah. through a blood clot, it was it was on the night of the 26th. And okay. As my dad would tell you, like, he was dead right then. But I think his official date of death, you know. Was the 27th. But either way, you look at it, they, they of course, 23 years apart, but yeah. by a day or two. And, and that, that just hit me all of a sudden the other day when I got to think about it. I was like, whoa. Like, that was nearly the same day. Um, yeah, that's crazy. But yeah, Dang. three days shy of a hundred. Um, of course, both of both of them World War II vets, like most people that <laughs> were born at that <laughs> yeah. time. Most men, anyway. Um, but wasn't a lot of them guys around these days. No, not, not many of them left. It uh, you know, it's funny, you know, and, and you mentioned this too, talking about, you know, you know somebody. Well, I mean, I knew him for forty years, and I still learned things that I didn't know about him. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, in the, probably the one thing that I that I did learn that I didn't know. Was he, he? He was the oldest of eight, and actually five of them are still living. Dang, yeah. really? Yeah, wow. six, I mean six of them were still living, and he was the oldest. Um, yeah, but the youngest is eighty five right now, and five of them, oh, eighty five and up, are still living. Holy so, crap! Yeah, you kind of hope you get those genes. Kind of. I was going to say, man. But but his dad. So my great grandfather married my great grandmother when he was fourteen. She was twenty one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they they had my grandfather when he was only sixteen. Wow. It was 1923, Man. of course. So you can imagine how poor they were. Yeah. You know, and then going through the Great Depression, um, you know. Dang, 14-year-old and a 21-year-old, man. He was going after the older gals. Well, yeah, right. You think about <laughs> it, but I'm just like, man, you know, getting married at 14 and then having a kid at 16. Well, then just to keep putting it in perspective, so my granddad went, you know, from 43 until he, he you know, was honorably discharged or whatever in 46 from the, yeah from the army and so when he got out of the army he would have been 23 his dad was younger than i am now yeah, <laughs> his dad was yeah. Only been 39. <laughs> i'm like 
that, that's wild to me because like my son's five yeah yeah <laughs> you know um, golly i, I didn't yeah. get married at 14 and i didn't start having See, kids until I, I was in my 30s <laughs> i figured you were gonna say his dad was 14 his mom was like nine like it's right. no, like no, a, no 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 it, it wasn't that wow was, 14 and 21 and, and a story i did know because i had heard this before when he got back from the war which again he had seven younger siblings that would have all still been at home um and but they were sharecroppers yeah and you know my great-grandmother went to the field every day and uh when he got back from the war he told his dad he said she's not going back to the field again um he said we're gonna make sure like we're gonna take care of the family like she's not she's not gonna have to do that anymore yeah like i thought that was pretty cool yeah um but i that that part of the story i had heard but i i, I never realized that my my great-grandfather was only was that four, young? 14 when he got married 16 started having kids like man yeah that's I mean, it had to have been hard times. Share oh, gosh, yeah. Then you know, you know, going through the Great Depression, you know. Woo. I just, but, speaking of the Great Depression, I just listened to a uh, podcast series on Prohibition. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's called American History Tellers. Have you ever heard of it? I don't guess so. Man, it you would like it because it's a very historical podcast. Um, but Well, that time frame fascinates me that, the, the, you know, the – Immediately, you know, following World War One, World War One. I, I mean, just history in general fascinates yep. me, I guess. But, um, you know, of course, the the Yellowstone, you know, prequel or whatever, nineteen twenty three. Oh, that's my favorite. It was nineteen twenty three, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's yep. the year he was born. Um, and then I'm watching uh, Peaky Blinders, which of course it's set in England, but again, same time, same like, time. Like, and and the common theme of it is all the how awful World War One was and all the the PTSD those guys were going through, which gotcha. again, same thing with 1923 with yeah. Spencer. Yep. You know, um, so yeah, that, that, that kind of time frame has really fascinated me. Oh, I, I'm like the twenties third, the really the, probably the twenties to the fifties is probably some of my, I feel like that's probably, if I had to pick a time, if someone's like, we're going to send you back in time, I don't like know, that's man. a terrible, I know like the depression, but like, I would love to be able to go back and just, you know, see what it was like. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, that was tough. Now, listening to the Prohibition one, is, it was really cool. Uh, especially they get, they they had six parts. Six or actually seven parts. Um, and one of them, you know, talks about Al Capone because he was the big, you know, transporting whiskey and all that stuff. And he was making, he was making a ton of money. And they ended up getting him on tax evasion. You know, that's how they I, got him. I knew him. that. I actually, I don't, something popped up on one of my, social media feeds the other day um i don't know maybe it was field ethos had shared an article um i think it about was, him it was about one of the main um I, it was i think it was before it was officially called the fbi yeah but essentially the fbi agent that that was after you know the chicago mobsters gangsters whatever and um it's kind of a tragic story how like they were trying to to shut down prohibition and kind of a, I don't know, a, you're kind of the, the, the theater guy, the, what's the, like a plot twist, or whatever, that yeah. he turns into an alcoholic. Uh, the FBI guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, it, he, he was a workaholic, it sounded yeah. like, and like, you know, his family, like, he, he, he had a failed, you know, family life. And, yeah. And ended up like, dying pretty early i don't know oh, if it man. was directly related to alcohol but i think it was like man like he can't became the one thing he was fighting, fighting so hard against <laughs> yeah um, yeah that was a total total tangent well it was a cool it's a cool time frame back then but yeah definitely so cheers to papa peewee yeah papa and gary both yeah um before we announce the giveaway winner we need yeah, to do yeah, our we, honors we here a, we, we do have a winner um but yeah we mentioned Ag Zag. I know yep. last week we talked about they're doing their daily flash sales the entire month of November. So it's already started, and we've already missed the first few days. But I'm looking at – I've actually put a calendar out so you know what's going to be on sale each day going forward. Um, and I'll go ahead because, of course, we're recording on Thursday. But t today, as this drops on Friday, they're going to have the Little Buster Toys flatbed hay truck so, so similar to my truck that I, yeah. I use on the farm um but but different toys every day they got tractors farm trucks the um skid steers side by side you name it some of the yellowstone themed toys um, well and i think our code 
works on top of the sale. Oh, yeah, yeah. So no, you absolutely. Use Talk Dirt, wall one word, all caps, save 10% off of what they've got already on there. So you'll still get an additional discount. So check out that calendar, and that's at uh, agzaga.com. Yeah, follow them on Facebook, Instagram. They put up the, the calendar yeah. on there. Yeah, the one that was for today, which, again, will be old by the time everybody hears this, but was uh, John Dutton's. Ram pickup oh, truck, okay, I see that. which was 22% off. But then, yeah, you can use the Talk Dirt code on top of that. Um, yeah. So go on there. Yeah, look at the calendar because you can look ahead and know know what days, what toys are going to be available. And, um, heck, you may want to may want to cash in more than once. Yep. So we got a winner of the giveaway. And we're pumped up. I've actually reached out and made contact with him uh, before anybody says there was some home cooking. We used a giveaway app. Uh, yeah, relatively and, local to us, but it's, it's somebody neither one of us knows. Yeah, um, no, we don't know him. He, he's not immediately in our area, but not too far away. Yeah, and he, uh, but he's been an avid listener of the show and uh, reached out, which that's what we both had said. We hope we got a guy that was like a listener of the show. Yeah. Guy or girl. We had some women in her too. Um, but so Michael Hazelrig is the winner of the show, uh, the giveaway. So we are going to be coordinating with him. Congratulations, Michael. Uh, we'll be co- coordinating with you, see when we can get you in studio here. Um, it will, it's, I mean, man, we're pumped. And, I, and I'll tell you, this giveaway process, because, I mean, I'd never done this. You'd never done this. Yeah. So we were like, how do was, I'm not sure how this works. When the timer ran out, basically I got notified that the giveaway was done. Yeah. And then I just went in there and it said, uh, award or reward and i just clicked the button and it popped up who wins yeah and it's a computer thing it figures it up oh, so yeah. there ain't no home cooking here but well I mean, like i say we, we don't i mean we're, we're going to get to meet him we're looking forward to it yeah uh, well i mean you know as far as it being somebody local our our audience i'm sure is skewed to you know we have a, in our area i was gonna say we have a law lo- tennessee is our number one state right cool now we got a, we've gotten out there oh and i will tell a cool story real quick congratulations michael uh we'll be in contact with you um and y'all stay tuned we'll definitely do some more giveaways yeah now that we know how to use all the software yeah yeah not. but i went to uh dave's diesel the other day i had to pick up a part yeah and while i was in there he got to he started asking me about the podcast and um he said, yeah, I had a guy call up here uh, a few weeks ago, and he was asking about some part, and I don't remember if he was able to get it or not, but he said, uh, I asked the guy, because I said, how'd you find out about us? And he said, talk dirt to me, podcast mentioned you. And I said, where was the dude from? And he said, out of Kentucky somewhere. And he was like, you guys, y'all must really have some reach. And I was like, that is that is pretty cool. Yeah. So, I, hey, I appreciate y'all doing that, man. Like, you know, if we, the companies we recommend or something, I mean, we stand behind them. I mean, that's why we do what we do. Oh, yeah. Well, and we don't recommend them. I mean, we do business with a lot of places we don't recommend. Yes. We, we, we try not to badmouth, you know, the places we don't. Yeah, like, we just but, won't talk yeah, about them. Yeah. But, yeah, like, that was really cool. And, and I do urge you guys, if you have some obscure part for a big truck or, I mean, you never know what it is, I would call Dave's Diesel. And it's in Ripley, Tennessee. Um, and But I thought that was pretty cool. That so, is. No, that is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but we are going to basically do our Halloween episode yeah. a few days late. Because I think we had told, did we tell people what we were going to be covering? Yeah, yeah, we mentioned it, Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah, so we're going into Skinwalker Ranch, and uh, I've been listening to podcasts about it. Bobby Lee's been listening. I've been reading about it. Um, so I had some, I was going to kind of read some of the origin. You got anything you want to say before we jump in? Yeah, I, I was complete, like, I don't even, I may have, like, heard mention of it, but, like, I, I had, I knew just about as little as possible about this before I went into it. But it's and, and you're definitely more the the, the weirdo. supernatural, <laughs> you know, whatever extra just say whatever. it the weird guy. You, you're the Halloween guy, <laughs> so um, and so I, I and I'm glad. And which we'll give them a shout out. Um, Haunted oh, Cosmos, dude, the, it is great podcast. Because I had listened to one other podcast on it, actually on our trip to Wyoming and back, just because <laughs> we had you know 20 hours in the truck both ways to kill. Yeah, and uh. And the one we listened to, it, like it wasn't even. Like, yeah, you said I, I it threw even, you off. Yeah, I was like, I, but no, those guys do an excellent job, and like like you mentioned on here, they're um, 
they they work for a church or they are they pastors? I don't, I don't know. I think they were one of them at the church. Yeah, I, they I think that. one of them might be a pastor. It's, and they, it's Christian based. They approach it from a biblical perspective and yep. and try to explain how some and not just skinwalker they go through all sorts oh of man mothman prophecies how they, they they can be explained you know and how these things may be true and it's you know it's essentially confirmed or or not necessarily confirmed but yeah it, it can be it can still fit within the realm of being a christian and and believing in yep because i mean obviously demons exist evil exist and that is most of the high strangeness, as they typically refer to it, tends to have a demonic origin. Like that's kind of the that's kind of the common theme. But there, it is a it's an extremely education, like not educational, extremely entertaining podcast. And yeah, they do a great job. And and it's not like beat you over the head with the Bible. Like they they do it in a really good way. Um, so I do encourage you to check out Haunted Cosmos. But for those of you unfamiliar with Skinwalker Ranch, it's a 500-acre ranch in Utah, yep. and it's been around for like, I mean, hundreds of years. Yeah, it's the most of the history of it, I guess, because um, of course, obviously, that's a part of the country that, at least from the white man's perspective, hasn't been settled for an incredibly long time. Yeah, um, like 150 years or so. Yeah, but most of it was related to what the Sherman family that bought it when like in the late eighties, early nineties, something like that. Yeah. It was in the nineties there. Cause the, that's when it really started. The previous to get weird. owner, when you go back and, and research it, they, they knew about some weird stuff going on there, but they, they never really were open about it or anything. Um, it said like, but it, it, yeah, it's in, in North East, um, Utah, you know, I guess you yeah. I don't know if they refer to the, the upper section as the panhandle, like the extreme northwest part. But, yeah, j- j- just, I guess it's not too far from the Wyoming line. Yeah. I looked it up. We weren't, I was like less than 200 miles from there or something like that. Next time you'll go hunt, you ought to go yeah. over there. Well, and that's the thing. You can't you can't get on it. Like, it's yeah. very, like, heavily, like, fenced off. Like, it, yeah. it's private property. But Which, one of the first thing I think of, like, out there, it's 500 acres. Like, like, wow, big ranch. Out there, that's not a very big property. Oh, yeah, no. Um, yeah. And, like, it's cattle ranch i guess there's still cattle on it. yeah um and i don't know if um which a lot of the surrounding land which kind of ties in the story is native american you know um land so i don't know if you know if they've got grazing rights because that's the thing i'm like man you can't have a very big herd out there on 500 no. acres yeah because um, i don't know what their their annual rainfall has got to be pretty darn low there right yeah m- most of like they got hay production ground. It's usually going to be irrigated, that kind of thing. Um, well, that's what it was. The thing, things took a turn in 1994 on the ranch, and that's when Terry and Gwen Sherman purchased the ranch. Said it had laid empty for the past seven years. The the previous owners had passed away. Yeah, and or, or the or the the man passed away, and the woman moved off the ranch. But yeah, she, yeah, yeah, she was put in assisted living. Okay, um, okay. and so and then when it passed down, uh, the family sold it. But it laid empty for seven years. It says during the next two years, the Shermans were plagued by paranormal activity, which quite literally drove them from the property. And yeah, they were cattlemen. I mean, it, yeah. they had and and it said they everybody talks about their prized bulls. I think it was just purebred Black Angus, wasn't it? Yeah, that they must have. They must have been in the registered business, like yeah. registered Angus. From what now, the guys, the Haunted Cosmos guys, which were really the ones that I listened to, they they weren't like cattle experts. So they weren't. You know, but but that's the way they way they made it sound is that they must be raising like seed stock, like yeah. mega seed stock. So yeah. higher value animals than just a commercial producer. Yeah. yeah. Well, it. Um, I was going to try to find some of the. I mean, they literally. It's it's pretty wild. Like yeah, weird stuff. Um, but the house had locks on everything, like even the cabinets, and there were locks on both the inside and the outside of all the doors, like like so you could lock stuff in or out. Yeah. Um, which makes sense like part of the being able to lock the cabinets like it it kind of makes sense because you know it was it was terry that'd be like working on the fence yeah and then he would like set his pliers down and turn around and do something and then he'd turn back around his pliers would be gone yeah and and a lot of it was like not like completely sinister type stuff i mean it was just annoying it was like annoying picking at you which which they did point out too they're like a lot of times like with a poltergeist type you know demon or whatever 
they start out at first and, and it escalates. Like yeah. at first they're just, yeah, they're almost jokesters. Like it's playing tricks on you. Yeah. Like um, his wife one time <laughs> came home from the grocery store, put away all the groceries, walked out of the room, came back into the kitchen and all the groceries were right back in the grocery sack. <laughs> yeah. Like she had never unpacked <laughs> yeah. it. Like just annoying stuff. Yeah. Like that. I, uh, you know, like I try to imagine that. Like obviously you'd be, pretty freaked out oh yeah but at the same time it's like what the hell <laughs> like, like, that kind of thing happened all the time you yeah know? like the, the towel would you know you have a towel ready for when you get out of the shower and you cut the shower off and your towel would be gone yeah and like you'd be like what, you damn kids where the, yeah but like yeah. the bathroom door would be locked like the kids yeah. couldn't have come in and you're yeah. like whoa um, seeing that i mean it's funny but it's also that's creepy as hell but but that was just one part of which let's back up even a little further like mo- like what is a skinwalker? Oh yeah, all right. So I I had pulled this up for the true origin of a skinwalker, which, which it reminds me, and I know you didn't you didn't watch it. Um, and I forget what they called them on in a uh, Game of Thrones. Uh, um, see, I watched it for about four seasons. Um, okay, well, and it's more towards the end where where basically a human is able to take an animal form, or basically like possesses that animal and and, and they're a shapeshifter kind of thing yeah yeah i guess that that might be the correct word um because the the one in game of thrones that was paralyzed like he could do that to, yeah to then you know go and run and do whatever but anyway but native americans believe that is possible um but th- but it's always like an evil process yeah from what so i understood it, like it's th- those are incredibly evil it's the skinwalker. It's an eight. It's an ancient Native American legend that takes on various forms across the tribes in Navajo lore. Which this, so from my understanding, they believe that Skinwalker Ranch was cursed by Navajo Indians. Right, right. And so in Navajo lore, a skinwalker is a kind of wicked sorcerer who can transform into, or occupy, or disguise themselves as an animal. And, and it's usually a wolf or a coyote. Yeah, it, it the dire be, wolf is yeah, the kind of the yeah. Which we, dire wolves were also in uh, Game of Thrones. You know? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's just like a mega wolf, like like they're like twice, well, literally twice the size of. A wasn't it Terry wolf. and them that encountered the dire yeah, wolf? And I guess that was where it all like the first weird thing they ever noticed when they. I don't even know if they were living on the ranch yet, but they had moved their cattle there. Yeah, and basically this wolf, but it clearly was something more than a wolf because it was enormous I calmly just walked up to them wasn't even afraid grabbed a hold of a calf started mauling this calf pretty much he just like opened up the arsenal on it like yeah shot he it had with a handgun i think three, he a 30 yeah 357 30 out six yep it was completely unfaced although they did say it like they could, you could hear the bullets hitting it. Yeah. It even knocked a huge chunk of flesh out of it. Yeah. Uh, but then it finally just calmly walked off. Yeah. Like, like wasn't even faced. And they, and they did say even the flesh smelled like rotting. Yeah. You know, meat like it like it wasn't even off of a live animal. Yeah. Um. And then it just walked away and they tracked it and it disappeared in the thin air more or less. But, I'm I'm just actually I'm in I'm impressed uh, because this is not Bobby Lee's typical thing some yeah, weird would, stuff, but I can tell that it, it kind of drew you in. Well, didn't it? and the weird thing about it, like that was the only time they really encountered one of those. Yeah, it was. Or yeah. I say wasn't the only time because there was another one when when his wife is getting home and she's like shutting the gate at the ranch and there's yeah a wolf yeah there. forget about that one. But then it it quickly like the the. the air quote skinwalker you know animal type dire wolf whatever you want to call them like those yeah they kind of went away it was somewhat it went more towards like the orbs and the weird lights and and like all sorts of weird stuff like i can't believe they stayed yeah they stayed for two years but and i got to thinking back because i was other than i know obviously they lost a lot more cattle than they should have like their death rate on their cattle was incredibly high yeah and there were some cattle mutilations sprinkled in yeah, there was the one time the three dogs got like vaporized. They you melted into but like that, goo. nobody ever got hurt. Yeah, like no no people were ever harmed. You know, and I, and there's a History Channel show on it now, right. and and it's you know and look like I I have seen ancient aliens and I've seen these some of those shows and you're like all right you know this is this is malarkey, but the dude that's over it now that's doing it he's like he makes them adhere to like strict 
strict rules yeah. that they can't like fluff up the show. And, uh, and I mean, they've had a lot of weird stuff, but it, it's very, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? It's like, it's aware that they're trying to track it. Well, right. Cause after the Sherman sold it, um, like a billionaire yeah, buys it, uh, 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 which I believe he was Mormon, um, yep. like businessman on, on all sorts of other business. He never lived there, but he bought it strictly because he knew the legend of it and he wanted to figure it out. And basically they brought in like all sorts of scientists. Oh yeah. Surveillance. It, I mean, haunted cosmos put it like it, and this is exactly what I thought of like Jurassic park where he's like, this rich dude is like, I'm going to bring in all the crackpot scientists because yeah. I've got the endless amount of budget here. And I just want to like dump the money to this so I can figure out what's going on. But, but you're right. Like the more they tried to surveil it, like it always avoided their surveillance it was always, you know, cameras would all go offline like yep. at exactly the same time they and go back. And, and that's the big thing to point out. Like it ain't like they would set up the cameras and just never get anything, their equipment would be basically disabled. Right. Like and, it, and it was, you know, they would have all, you know, so many cameras where it, each camera was watched by another camera. So somebody couldn't like come up to it and just like whack it with a ball bat and knock yeah. it out. And like, they wouldn't be like permanently damaged, like, but they would just be, and they would go back and watch it and slow it down frame by frame. And sometimes like you'd be, you'd be able to see like a flash of something, like it, it was something moving so fast. Or they talked about how, and I don't understand all the physics. Like if some, it's like an interdimensional thing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like time is like a different. You know, I, I, my my, I, I took physics one and physics two. <laughs> Those were required <laughs> prereqs for vet school. But uh, yeah, I don't understand like the, the quantum like new age. I definitely where, don't. Um, which I guess the Shermans, when they were still there, they did start. They got shot at by one of the orbs. Because that was yeah, what made point, them leave, like wasn't it? Yeah. Was that which, what which made them leave? Finally got, they got fed up with it, which that was one time, you know, and he sent the dogs after. He, like, basically told the dogs, get it. Yeah. And then they heard the dogs yelp. And then and it, the next, and, that morning they found three grease spots, like, <laughs> and they're like, yep, there's our dogs. Well, and, that's a, and, and they were talking dogs. about this dude is, like, not, this isn't, like, a candy dude here. Like, no, but no, no. Very, he, very. Hard you know, cattleman, yeah, like, no, rancher. Like stuff. But he was too afraid to go out at night. Yeah. Like, that's... Well, but then there was instances where they would chase, like, they thought it was an RV. Like, apparently, you know, people would, like, just try to camp on their, their property and stuff. And they thought they were, it was an RV one time. But then it, <laughs> you know, it just basically flew away. Yeah. It's like all kinds of weird stuff. I mean, it's, it, it's probably more to it than, I mean, maybe they were making it up, but, you know... I mean, they even like called the sheriff, you know, sometimes, and he's like, "Well, yeah, I don't know what to do for this." And I think, uh, all right. So I listened to another podcast, and I'm almost positive. Well, I know this was on some cattle mutilations where the sheriff said, like, he was afraid, and it's like a dude that was like, "I looked, I considered him." Did you ever watch No Country for Old Men? Oh yeah, yeah, I, great he, movie. That's, that is a movie I've seen. I've I, seen it multiple times. I love that movie, but he was kind of like the Tommy Lee Jones yeah. sheriff, and uh, you know, and he was afraid, and so a similar aspect with this, which there's a lot of stuff even that like Haunted Cosmos, I, I don't remember if they talked about it. They might have. No, I think they did. Like, you can't dig on the ranch. Like, Well, that was one of the weird <clears> things <throat> when the Shermans bought it. The previous owners told them, no. Like you can't dig. Um, See, all right, and that makes me question. There's a couple of things that makes me question the previous owners because they try to claim that they didn't experience much weird stuff. But if that's the case... Why would they care if the people dug on the place? And why would they have the locks on the cabinets the way that See, they do? I don't know, because things are different out there. Like, around here, like, you buy a property, like, you can do whatever you want to. Like, there's no, yeah. like, but out there, there's, like, you know, do you have water rights? You know, do you have mineral rights? And it's like, it, it, that, that's so foreign to us, because I'm like, I bought the property. Like, yeah. a creek or a river runs through it. Yeah. Like, I can, <laughs> Get I can, water yeah, that, that, that stuff, I don't understand it, which, I mean, obviously water's a lot bigger deal out there because they yeah. don't have near as much of it. Um, and yeah. I, but it makes me think, like, 
And especially the locks on all the, the doors like they yeah. had. It's like, all right, these bastards were experienced shit. They just yeah. don't want to say it. Because, one, I mean, it's kind of like the same with the scientists that came and later started working on it. A lot of them initially wanted to remain anonymous because they didn't want to, like, ruin their reputation right, right, right. of like, being oh, alien hunters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so. Project. But it was all kinds of weird stuff where the scientists, were like, couldn't explain things. Like the one guy, they were gonna like fly a drone, but like it, it um basically like as soon as they would go out there, the battery would just zapped. And yeah, I mean, this battery is supposed to last like you know hours and hours. And like, yeah, he's like, I can't even fly it because as soon as we come out here, it's gone. Yeah. And then they did some some drilling at one point, and whatever they were they had drilled into was like they even were having like these I don't know if you call them geologists or who, but like. Professors from like University of Utah or Utah State or whatever, they're like, yeah, like this is, like this can't be naturally occurring. You know, it was like deep in the ground, yeah, like metallic. I was like, well, and wasn't it a bunch of them that were they tried to dig and like all of them got like one of them had like such a bad headache they had to take oh, him to yeah, the hospital. Yeah, yeah, he had like a huge like tumor, brain bleed. <laughs> yeah, um, no, well, it was a, just a brain bleed. Okay, yeah, um, but yeah, every time they would start to dig and. um <laughs> And like he would get to the hospital, be like, dude, like you could have died. Like, yeah. And um, and it was like it was stopping them. So it, it was, I mean, again, unless they're just completely fabricating every bit of this, which I have a hard time believing. There's there's some weird stuff. So um, you you're in you've bought into it. Well, right. I, I just, I mean, I don't know that the, yeah. the way they broke it down. It's like, man, it's it's. I mean, there's something weird's going on there. Yeah. Um, well, the what was the one. <laughs> One of the other instances, and it actually might have been, it was right towards the end of the Sherman's reign on there was when his bulls went missing. Oh, yeah. And he was like, that, you know, if we lose these bulls, we're toast. Right, they had had a problem. They lost some cat, and their, him and his son were leaving the ranch to go do something. Yep. And they drove past the pen where they had the bulls pinned up. And and he made the comment, which was like, "Oh, don't make the comment like that's yep. such foreshadowing." Yeah, like, man, we really can't afford for anything to happen. It was, <laughs> it was three or four bulls. Four, yeah. And uh, they get back from like town. They're gone like an hour, and the bulls are gone. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and they're like freaking out. They're looking everywhere. I guess they had a trailer right there. Yeah, it was a trailer. And finally, they look in the trailer, and all four bulls are packed in there like sardines like yeah. there's no way you could have physically put these four bulls in this little trailer yeah and it's like the bulls were asleep it's like yeah the they were in a weird trance because yeah. he like says something to them and then and then it's like all of a sudden they wake up and they're just start you know panicking because they're like trapped you know yeah. and uh and then then he said the latch on the gate or the door to the trailer when he you know i guess because obviously he was wanting to get let them out of there before they hurt themselves it had like cobwebs on it, like, yeah, like where it, it had not been, it had touched. not been disturbed. You yeah, know? it's like, all right, yeah, yeah, <laughs> dude. You know, and so they were there for two years. Man, I don't know. Like, I'm a the yeah, I'm a horror movie guy. Um, you know, and I've mentioned we actually last Halloween we talked about The Conjuring was one of the movies we yeah. talked about, and and I watched these horror movies. And I always think to myself, especially because I'm a sucker for a haunted house horror movie. That's probably my favorite. That's why I love The Conjuring. But I watch movies like that or the Amityville Horror. And, uh, you know, they're in the house. And, like, the first night there, they're sleeping. And they get woke up at 3 in the morning. And you hear a voice saying, get out. You know, Dude, if I heard that, I'd be out. (laughs) <laughs> like yeah. i'd be like okay well, yeah yeah, yeah. And that's, that's it yep that's all i needed to hear <laughs> you know I don't, you know I, and i did try to kind of put myself like man but like and i don't know i mean i guess it'd be easy to relatively to look it up like what was the sherman family's background like why were they like not just like nope we're out like, yeah but yeah i mean you know, you can imagine how excited you probably would be. Oh yeah, buying you, know, you a five hundred acre ranch, it's a dream property, and apparently, you know, it's, you know, there's a there's a lot of, you know, it wasn't just a junk, you know, five hundred acres like yeah, yep. just a piece of desert out here. You know? Yeah, no, it, it was, you know, it had a lot of features on it. Water, um, talked about as very pretty. You know, it has the mesa on it that I think yeah. was always referred to as Skinwalker Mesa, like the, the yep. natives had actively referred to it as such. Um, 
But yeah, you know how devastated you would be. Which, you know, and then I'm like, kind of wondering myself, I'm like, so is this place worth an enormous amount of money because it's so unique? Well, or, I don't is, know. or is it worth less because, it, which I, I mean, I don't know. It's probably public record, like what they've sold it for. But. Well, that's what I was going to say. The uh, the Shermans or the next guy bought it for two hundred thousand dollars. Ooh, man! Like that's that's pretty cheap. And I don't know. Yeah, what? Because again, their land typically now, I, per acre is not as productive as ours around here. But I have looked. So I looked here recently, and this was it was some land. It was how how many acres? Ninety thousand acres for sale in uh like wyoming or out there and it was like i think it was 30 million or something and they i think that was almost 30 million dollars it was ninety thousand acres there was another one that was uh it was like thirty four thousand acres but it came with a lease it actually was a total of three hundred and like fifteen thousand acres that's why like when you hear 500 acre ranch here, like we said, 500 acre ranch would be a pretty good size ranch. Like, yeah. but we can graze a lot more cattle per acre. Like, what can you graze one and a half, two cattle per acre? Well, here? typically we'll say you probably for a cow calf pair, if you want to do cow calf, probably one and a half to two acres per pair. Okay. Uh, well, that, but you know, out there, hell, you probably need five or you, I bet. And there's areas out there you might need damn near 10 acres for one cow. Oh, there's there's places where you need 50 for a pair. Okay, see, there, for, yeah, like, I mean, so. This, this place was more productive than that, I believe. Yeah. Um, but, but, it, but to it, need 10 to 20, sounded like they might have had, you know, seem like they may have even said, I, don't, I think they had less than 100 head. Yeah. Um, but it sold for 200000 at $100 one point. dollars an acre. Yeah. And I had a house on it. And yeah. I, I don't know about barns and other structures. I assume it has some of those facilities like that's yeah. crazy oh yeah well it so it borders I, i'll read a few of the little things on it here so it borders the ute indian reservation yeah. and the utes it, it says this was obviously it was created during the mid-19th century by abraham lincoln our cousin yeah. um abraham yeah. lincoln nancy hanks was his mother um your dad traced us back hey oh, you yeah, know, no. we're we are presidential legacy here That's right. maybe one of us will run for president one day um so i think you ought to run for president with the scarlet you know that'd be I, pretty I good I, could, I bet i could get like one percent of the vote oh man i bet you could alone. yep run on the no you know taxation without representation is theft like no taxation all this kind oh, of yeah, thing I, I, I run as the libertarian candidate or a, a spinoff I mean, uh, we, I don't need to spin. We don't need to spin off because we don't need to keep splitting that vote. But a skull, it would fit the libertarian like runner. Yeah, I mean, that really would. Damn, yeah, yeah. Um, not, not to go down that, but the sworn enemy of the Utes was the Navajos. Yeah, and so it says during the American Civil War, uh, some Ute bands joined with U.S. military forces against the Navajo. Navajo were defeated and banished from their lands, forced to march to a reservation in New Mexico, that event known as the Long Walk, which took two months and resulted in the death of 200 Navajo. Local legend attests that the Navajo put a curse on the Ute tribe, unleashing malevolent spirits to roam the land in which the Ute lived. These spirits are known as skinwalkers, evil witches that can shapeshift into a multitude of different creatures. And uh, within with the entire... Un, Unta Basin said to be plagued by skinwalkers. It's no wonder the ranch is named after them. The one thing in particular to me that on that is most of this stuff is centered right here on the ranch, though. Yeah. Like it's it's not unless I mean it may be I don't know maybe this weird stuff's plaguing the whole Ute tribe like reservation. Yeah, are just refusing, they just don't talk about it to to go public with it. Yeah, that's that, that might be. Um, well, and the whole thing kind of reminded me somewhat, just because it's that part of the country and all the supernatural. Did you ever watch Outer Range? No, I did not. I have not watched that. Is it was there... only one season. Which it, it it reminded me of that I'm like, was season two coming out? And looked it up, and season two is coming out on Outer Range. Was so, that a, was that pretty good? Man, I like Josh Brolin, but I yeah, it, it and it it kind of sucked me in, and I I'm not a like. I'm not a sci-fi guy yeah. by any means, but 
if it's done right, it's not just too ridiculous. That stuff does kind of, I am drawn to it. Oh yeah. And it did. And it's like, and you're still at the end of season one, you're still not sure what the hell is going on. And yeah. so I'm like, I got to keep watching. Is Brolin like the rancher? Yes. Yeah, they didn't he, gay he, it up, did they? No, not at all. I don't. I don't well, know. I might give it a chance. Yeah, then. which is because I think it's, is it on Prime? Yeah, I'm yeah, shocked. It's weird for, I am well, shocked. It's weird for Prime or Netflix. Anything or now? Hell, CBS. No, I mean, but it is crazy. Oh yeah, which means probably in season two, like oh, they'll get super scene, gay. Yeah. 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 Um, but uh, Brolin will bang a cow. I'm trying to remember. I probably need to go back and watch like the trailer for season one or something. Just I could tell it was something alien. No, well, and I don't even know that it's confer- like you don't really know, and it's, but it's like yeah, it's weird, and it's, okay, it it drew me in. And, well, I watch it, but it's kind of the same thing where like it's you realize it goes back like a long time, and it's is it kind of based on Skinwalker Ranch? I don't, I don't know that it is at all. Gotcha. Uh, um, like I don't even know that it's. I don't even want to. I want to say it's like in Wyoming is where it's set. Um, but anyway, generally the same part of the country. Um, Especially to us Easterners, it's, yeah. it's just all the oh yeah, it's all the same West region. Um, but uh, well, yeah, it got me fired up. That I was like, oh man, I looked it up and it says season two should come out either the end of twenty three or early twenty four. I'm fired up for Stranger Things, which is supposed to drop in four days. Oh really? Eleven oh six. It said. You know, I, I, and that's another kind of sci fi. Um, I love that stuff. But I um, love Stranger Things. Trying to even think how it ended. They they, they well, rescued Hop out of Russia. Yeah. Did they? Oh. I hope nobody's been watching. Has well, yeah, missed spoiler it. alert! But hell, it's season. <laughs> what, what season are we going into? Hell, I don't know. It's been like five years since yeah, the last I was about episode. To say, I was about to say, yeah, yeah. Spoiler alert! But if you hadn't watched it, you're probably not going to. Yeah, yeah. Did, did, did they make it back to the U.S.? I it, think and, so. Didn't they get the plane and steal the plane? Well, yeah, but I don't ever. I can't remember. Like, did they officially make it out? I they, don't like, remember. Process. I, I can't know, remember. Were, I might have to go back and watch. Weird, Demi Gorgons. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. I love some Stranger Things. That's two of my favorite things. Some weird kind of horror sci-fi and then 80s. I love the 80s. I'm a child of the 90s, but my heart is in the 80s. Um, So I was going to read some of the weird stuff like here, just talking about the Shermans. Out of range was Wyoming. I had to look that up. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, generally the same. Area. Well, and I like Josh Brolin. I mean, we talked about No Country for Old Men. That was him. Um, But the Shermans... Oh, and actually, I got my half face blades hat on. He's made Brolin some knives. Yeah. So he's a knife guy. I don't. He's probably a weird anti gun guy, but he's not. He's a knife guy. Man, don't know. I can't even go. I can't. Even yeah. Say that. Oh, the Sherman. Refuse to believe that until until, <laughs> until he comes out and confirms it. Yeah. He, he's a big Second Amendment guy. <laughs> we'll just, yeah, we'll hope so. Um, the Shermans would often hear disembodied voices. See, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, this is was this, pretty much everything weird. Like there was even a few reports like Bigfoot. That's where originally I was like, come on, like literally. I know. Well, that's what every, I'm saying. I'm I am so glad to hear how much you've gotten pulled into this because well, initially you were like, the Holy oh, Cosmos oh. guys. Like without them, I was. Yeah, originally before I listened to that seri- <laughs> podcast series, I was like, "There's no way," because like, literally it was like every supernatural thing that has ever been reported, like everything but the lot trolls has and has been seen ogres there. and yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, uh, well, it, the voice is speaking directly above them. That's like it said: the night sky would randomly light up. Cows literally disappeared. Their hoof marks coming to an end in the snow, with no sign of the creatures anywhere to be seen. And it does say here, yeah, one night their uh, cattle came under attack by what looked like a large wolf. Several shots were fired into the creature who eventually slunk away into the night without seemingly, un- or it said seemingly unharmed. Right. And then uh, UFO sightings were commonplace, and sometimes they turned deadly. It says flying, glowing blue orbs were spotted throughout the property. On one occasion, he encouraged his dogs to chase these. After disappearing into the under, undergrowth, audible yelps were heard. Dogs never returned, and then he found scorched earth and strange greasy blobs where they used to be. So, I mean, it's just too many weird things for like, like if I feel like if any other place you were like, okay, like if you're gonna make up a story like this. I just don't think you're going to literally be like, all right, this place is going to have everything. 
Like, you know, yeah. you're going to be like, all right, this place either has some aliens activity or it either has a little ghost activity or this or that. Like, they're just like, no, this place has got it all. Like, yeah. it's got it all. Yeah, I, I was, you know, which, you know, I don't know how you even explore it further. I guess I should watch the TV show because, again, you can't go there. No. Um, you know, it, it's private property. They have it gated off. Um, you know, which there was the story of the one guy, like the hippie dude that like wanted to go out there and meditate. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and somehow, I don't even remember which owner it was. Uh, I don't either. But he, he basically convinced them to let him do it. And they were like, at first they were like, no, it's private property. You can't do this. Yeah. But like he, he knew the legend of the ranch. And uh, while he's like meditating, some kind of like, they, they saw something like hovering over his head and like it never physically harmed him, but. Scared the living crap out of him. Like, like literally like once they got his attention, he realized it. like he just ran away, like, <laughs> yes. jumped in the car with them. They drove off and like. He, he, he literally scared so bad he couldn't even speak. He yes. Just, he just left. He was like, I'm, yeah. So, I, the I, next guy that bought it was the Bigelow, Robert Bigelow. He bought it from the Shermans for $200,000. That's incredible. Yeah. That just shows, man. Because to me, I'm like, man, you know, this place is so unique. It's probably actually worth more than what should be market value. I Even bet you. nobody would want to live there. Yeah. Like, there's going to be some weirdo billionaire out there yep. who's going to be willing to way overpay for it. Well, Bigelow, Which you know. That, I don't know. If, maybe that was market value, relatively speaking. But that seems incredibly low. I would think what that's super low. Sold? That was in 96. But that's I still, still think that's, that's still, super cheap. Uh, man, I don't know. Yeah, depending on how productive the ground was. I, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 we need to talk to a. Utah Realtor, real yeah. Right. Well, it and see, and Bigelow, Robert Bigelow, he's the one that he then sold it to the guy that has it now, and he sold it because he started to blame. Apparently, he started having like bad things happen to his family, and he started equating them to like that misfortune. Yeah, like dark stuff was happening around his family and he was like, it's because of the ranch. I'm good. Yeah, it ain't worth it. I'm a billionaire. All right. I and, don't need this. And he made a lot of money. Um, yeah, I was about to say, by the time he's, well, he was obviously a really good businessman. He probably knew how to, how to market say, it. Yeah, I'm going to flip this and I'm going to get out at least. Yeah. The day he sold it. So dang, man, this dude did good here. So he bought it for 200 grand and he sold it in 2016 for 4.5 million. Yeah. So the hype of it at that point has probably Which he elevated. May, he may have spent that much money. Well, shit, that's on, true. On yeah. all the, 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 I'm sure those scientists weren't cheap and all that equipment and everything. Like, yeah. He, he, you know, grand scheme of things, he may have just got out breaking even, which again, I think from what we know about him, he, he had it to burn. Yep. Um, well, that, yeah, because he was a billionaire. Um, as well and then he sold it in 2016 to adamantium holdings adamantium if i remember right and i'm gonna be a little nerdy here but adamantium is the metal that wolverine has on his skeleton like on his skeletal yeah. system i'm thinking is adamantium if some of you are listening you're a fellow x-man fan tell me if i'm wrong or right this I don't know I hadn't looked at this part. This says Blink One Eighty Two is linked to the ranch, the band. It said it's long been fascinated with UFOs. Tom DeLong um, said he established his company to the Stars Academy of Arts and Science as a hybrid entertainment and UFO research entity. Okay, it says a lot of some of the people that worked for him were. Uh, Ex employees of Bigelow and or NIDS. NIDS is the current. Uh, yeah, okay. What's that acronym for? I don't. I was trying to find that NIDS. Oh, I can look that up. Yeah. After several years, the NIDS team was unable to pr categorically prove the stories of Gwen. It says, however, several researchers claim to experience paranormal events, many of which caused equipment to fail, preventing vital evidence from being captured. It is the National Institute for Discovery Science. Gotcha. It's an independent um, anomaly research organization. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, they're he, Pri privately financed research group. Yeah. Dude, and, and here's another thing. All right. So this one, this brings up the Bigfoot thing. So I have not, I don't think they touched on that on Haunted Cosmos. So this is a story. It says one of the NIDS investigators claimed to spot a creature one night that very much resembled the famed Bigfoot. 
but the guy's a biochemist. So, like, these aren't, like, there's a show. I don't remember if it's Finding Bigfoot or what, but there's a show, and it's, like, basically a bunch of hillbillies in the mountains, and they go looking. Have you seen this show? No. Dad, we were over there one night, and it was on, like, the Investigation Channel or something, and it looked like the it looked like it was videoed on, like, your cell phone, and it was a bunch of, like, fat uh, hillbillies, and they're like, what is that? There he is. There's Bigfoot. You know, like, this is a biochemist. Like, this is not that. That's one of the things I want to point out. Like, these guys have very high level credentials. They even point out, like, some of them actually work for the U.S. government on some of the jobs, which, again, we're not, I don't know how much credit, like, credence that offers, but. They're not like a backwoods hillbilly. Biochemist Colm Kelleher spotted the creature spying on him from a nearby tree approximately 50 years, uh, 50 yards away. After Kelleher fired a shot off at the beast, it quickly disappeared. Inspecting where he had stood, he discovered deep tracks in the snow of around six inches in diameter that strangely included claw marks as if from a bird of prey. So... You know, they said Bigfoot. I would almost err more towards the side of maybe like, I don't know, the bird of prey thing would be strange, but we've already seen it could kind of shape shift essentially into a dire wolf. So it's like, who's to say, I mean, that might have just been one of the crazy, crazy forms that it had taken at that point. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it, but... There, I think, yeah, there's there's something something weird about it. Yeah, I, I don't know what ultimately the explanation is. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's one of those things that, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know how things exactly will work for us when when we reach the afterlife and whatnot. <laughs> but but if the good Lord allows us to to ask some questions, that'd like, be one. Yeah, explain that. Yeah, and like what is going on there? Yeah, you know, Area Fifty One. Let's 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 talk about that for a few minutes yeah who, i would who killed jfk yeah like, like, who was it actually i hope that we get to do that i would and i'd actually be like is there any way you can just make me into a little floating orb and i can I, go into area 51 and see I what it I, is? I don't think that we will get those answers yeah because uh, yeah that, well that, we won't be worried that, that would about ruin that the perf- right that, that would yeah. ruin the perfection of what, what yeah. heaven is you yeah know is when we get to heaven the last thing on our mind is probably going to be skinwalker ranch yeah but it would be cool yeah it would be cool to know but um yeah there's definitely something going on there and which i'm the guy man like i and i've said this before like and i can't really apply it here because i really do think there's something going on here like there's been too many people that are not jabronis going out there there's been too much these aren't the ancient alien guys yeah no no I mean, which they pointed that out in the podcast they're like the history channel really kind of screwed up by having that that series because it <laughs> complete like anytime the history channel does anything with anything paranormal or ufo people are like oh yeah you know yeah. I, all i think about is that meme with like the guy, aliens the guy, yes. the, the, the weird hair guy like talking about like yeah. this dude is clear <laughs> on some psychedelic yes <laughs> and yeah i'm sure he sees aliens yes i i don't doubt that guy yeah because he definitely sees some things but but yeah and that's what they point out they're like the show they do on skinwalker ranch that which i have yet to watch they're like no like it, it is really legit compared to that but yeah they, but they, they're kind of having to fight that stigma of yeah the ancient aliens so. oh yeah and people still which man anything you get into weird like that like the paranormal the alien thing i mean it's it's easy to not to just be like man it which the haunted cosmos guy and actually you know i'll, I'll give a slight little shout out so i've been doing a podcast on the side with my preacher and another guy from the church and uh it's called reverent and rebellious and we've been doing a halloween series and it's been over um we actually are about to do aliens in this next one hit me a little bit there if you don't mind um but it's going to be, uh, all right, that's good. We've done our last episode we just did was on Halloween. It was over witches. Yeah. And we did one on, uh, ghosts. 
ghouls, goblins, werewolves, all the nine things. And, and we did shapeshifters, which would be a skinwalker pretty much. And it's the same thing these Haunted Cosmos dudes have said. For me, as because we're Christians on the show, like it's not anything we shy away from. You know, we there's a, ma- a page I follow on Instagram called Christians Who Cuss Sometimes. I was like, that's a pretty good page. But um, it's demonic to me. Most most of the weird uh, and the phrase is high strangeness um, is typically has a demonic origin. Yeah. And that's kind of even it fits even if you trace back to the Indian like the Navajos. I mean, it's a cursed sorcerer basically. I mean, and it's basically cursed with a demonic spirit. And um, so they all of these weird things tend to have like if you trace the lineage back, there's like a weird, dark, occult, uh, demonic spirit going on there. Yeah. Now I and I mean yeah we. You know, we know evil exists. And, yeah. And, and and so I, yeah, that's where I have a hard time just saying, like, oh, no, it can't be real. Like, no, I, I you know, it it is interesting that a lot of this stuff, you know, especially like when we talk about the cattle mutilations, it's always like out west. And yeah. I don't know. We're in the Bible Belt, man. Well, <laughs> and part of me, like, the skeptical side of me says, like, well, yeah, it's so densely populated out there. Like, if you were going to pull off a hoax, or yeah. you're gonna say yeah. something, you know, weird was happening. It's it's very easy to go somewhere where there's just not that many people. Period. And you, yeah, you know, and it's it, you know, around here, it, it's just it it would be a lot harder to do. But I, yeah, I don't know. Like, I believe there's enough to it. I which I don't. I barely have enough time to watch what little bit of TV I <laughs> I watch now. But um, I may try to look into that History Channel series. Yeah, I'm on it. And I know we got a couple listeners that watch it because they had they had Skinwalker Ranch was actually kind of recommended to me for us to cover on the show. Yeah, and so I was like, okay, we'll we'll dive into this. Which again, I like the weird stuff, man. It's like I'm all about some weirdness like that. Yeah. But, um, but I do, you know, I think the, I think the world. I mean, what's the thing, man? If you believe in God. Then you got to believe in the devil, and um, so the devil is, you know, he's he's got his demonic influences in the world, his demonic spirits. Uh, you read the Bible; there's literally demonic spirits all around. So I believe they're still around today. And um, I got to share a creepy story as we're finishing this up. So, and I just thought of this, and I think he listens to the podcast some. I know he does some. A buddy of mine became friends with uh, through Living Fully Loaded. And that's Austin Leg. Yeah. Now Austin is a Bigfoot believer, big time. Austin, if you're listening, you know I'm not hating on you. I've told you I'm like because <laughs> I mean he believes legitimate, uh, legitimately in Bigfoot. And uh, but one of my favorite stories, in and it's so creepy to me, was and I might. If I get a few things wrong, uh, Austin, we'll just we'll have to have you come on and share your story sometime. But uh, so he worked at the prison, yeah, years ago, and they had built this. Just it's good to end the Halloween one like this. They had uh, built in the same part of the country. I mean, yeah, generally yep. again, it's in Idaho, right? Yeah, <laughs> yep. And uh, and they had built basically a new kill house. Yeah, and um, they're. Austin's on the night patrol, and from my understanding, this is a large prison, so it's got like a, I can thankfully say I've, I've never been to prison, so I'm not real familiar with, with how the layout works, but it sounds like basically there's like large areas you got to walk around. There's different stations on here, and uh, so Austin is on the night patrol. It's probably, I don't know, midnight or so. He's walking around. And he gets to this kill house. And this is a new house. I think, had they just executed, like, the first person or something? I can't, uh, I can't remember the extreme specifics. But they had they had executed someone in it, but it was, like, very new. And Austin notices a light is on in the kill house. And so he, uh, he goes in, because, you know, he's the guard on duty this night. He goes in there, and uh, he's checking it out. 
And it, I think if I remember right, the like the water is running or something at the back of this place. So he goes in there and he turns the water off and he like shuts the lights out. And then I want to say a door even swings open and the lights come on. And Austin is basically like, place is clear and he he gets out of there and he said he just never went back in there like i think he said he was like from then on he's like yep it's clear and dude i mean things like that like i i know austin well enough at this point that i know austin ain't making up the story like i i believe the guy and so explain a situation like that to me like yeah. there's just stuff out there that you just can't really explain like i think our minds want to want to be like it's got to be cut and dry but it's man some stuff just ain't yeah and uh and right we, we want we want everything to be nice and neat and and you know we can yeah give it a perfect explanation but like now there, there's things in life that 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 we want to understand and the bible tells us that yeah i mean yeah you know and so i don't know it, it, as much as yeah it's in our nature to try to to work through that um, I don't know. I, I've I feel like I'm I'm become more and more okay with just saying I don't know. Yeah, and and I and and that's okay, you know, kind of thing. Um, yeah. In my line of work, we have to say that a lot. You know, it seems like you know, just, <laughs> you know we, we always want answers, and of course, our clients always want answers. But sometimes we have to tell them, like, look, I I can point you in a direction of like more and more tests that can be run or whatever yeah. it can be done, but like got to realize like sometimes we're just not gonna know like, yeah like, we, we don't always get the answer so uh, yeah certainly not the answer we want but sometimes we, we can't get a definitive answer period yeah and um i don't know i feel like life's too short to be spend the whole time worrying about trying to get an answer to every little thing and not 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 t- just taking time just to enjoy you know what's around us and what we, what we can not not to get too like philosophical no yeah um, um, I'm gaying this up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going on Netflix on me over here. Yeah. yeah. Before you know it, I'll be sitting in Logan's lap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not, not quite. <laughs> no. And, uh, but it, it, it is. Michael does not want to, to come on the show. Yeah, now. now he's like, man, let me let me just pull my name back out of there. Yeah, just send me the hats. We'll, yeah. we'll call it good. <laughs> yeah. No, um, but no, I, I agree. And it is funny. Like, I. I am actually pretty okay with not knowing things. Yeah, like they're right. There's just there's just stuff I just can't explain, and I'm like, I just can't explain it. Don't know. Yeah, you know, and it is one of the things. Like maybe in the afterlife, maybe I'll like know the answer. Maybe I won't. Most likely, I won't even care when I get to the afterlife. But um, yeah, I, I'm okay with not knowing. So, but I thought that was. Man, I thought that was fun. Like that was, I know some, we probably got our, you know, our one, the guy that left us the comment that time and was like, wanted us to only talk about ag all the time. Yeah. He'll, he'll probably hate this episode, but I mean, to me, I'm like, all right, we're talking about a ranch. So like, yeah, we're talking, we talked about some cattle oh, yeah. stuff. No, and it, 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 look, it was the Halloween theme. Yeah. It definitely had the, the farm and ranch, um, you know, connection there, uh, and it was uh, fun, man. It was fun. Like, I, I think the listeners will enjoy it. I'd love for you guys. I want you to comment below um, on Spotify. There's a place to comment on Spotify. Um, so y'all comment on Spotify, comment on YouTube, uh, shoot us an email or whatever. Let us know if you enjoyed this episode. And because, uh, I mean, this is this is fun. Let's just sprinkle this in here again, special for, for a Halloween episode. And I always ask if you have topics or questions. Please submit them. Go to talkdirtpodcast.com and uh, submit them to us because we love answering the questions. We've still got quite a few. I'm sure next week we'll probably answer some more questions as well as have some topics for you guys. But uh, you got our got our main Man, here. Let me let me get to him again. He's my favorites because of course <laughs> he's, he's my favorite president. The, 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 my favorite current president. He's the most American, ain't he? most popular ever that's what they say yeah that's true two words made in america well i mean that's i mean just based on number of sure number of votes he got he is the most popular president yeah ever. yeah well he's look at what a job he's doing yeah that's of course the funny thing everybody's pointing out now is like 
pretty much everything they said Trump was going to do, which was crash the economy and start World War Three, like, yep, it literally is happening right after Trump left. Yes, and and it, he couldn't have had us on a better track as far as the economy. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 I don't want to say peace in the Middle East because I don't think there's ever has been or ever will be peace. Oh but, man, yeah, but, but just as far as relatively well behaved you know parties over in the middle east and like <laughs> no in, in fact um it turns out that uh the swamp likes war yes and and and, and they needed him out of there because they needed their buddies you know to get those contracts and and start shipping i i have been a little irritated which i sent you the thing because i thought it was weird but like I wish the Republican Party would stop devouring itself, oh. which I guess they all kind of do that. But like, like for one, like with DeSantis, they attack DeSantis all the time. And I'm not so short. Like my memory is not so bad that I can't recall the fact that DeSantis was one of the few governors that was like standing up to him on the shutdowns during COVID yeah. and all this stuff. So like, like I, I actually, man, I like DeSantis and, I think oh, yeah. I think it was a bad time for him to run. Well, the problem is like Trump, and I won't say incredibly because I mean I and I like Trump, I like DeSantis, but like Trump is like so far, it, like it's I don't no even know point. why the rest of them are wasting yeah. time. Like it's no point. Like I, somebody dropped out. Maybe it was Pence the other day. Like, well, I don't know like, why he I was didn't even, even make running. headlines. I'm like what? Like I didn't. I really did not even. I guess. I did realize that he was kind of <laughs> had it thrown his hat in the ring, but like, now like short of Trump getting assassinated, which I know there's a lot of people that would like to do that. Like yeah. there's, I mean, or, or the Republican party trying to pull some total shenanigans on him. Like he's going to be the nominee. Oh yeah. He like, you will be like, he has, you know, you could take the next four combined and put them together and they still wouldn't have yeah. you know, as much support as Trump well, has. And it, it's just, and I, don't I don't know if that's good or bad, you know, for the Republican party and for, for conservative America and all that, you know, I, part of me, you know, the, the, the part of me that wants to be entertained, is like, Oh, it needs to be Trump. This is going <laughs> to, this is going to be a great campaign a lead up to the election. If he won, Oh man, get your popcorn ready for four more years of that. Well, and that's because uh, he's just going to spend the whole time trolling everybody. Well, and, and, and which it's, is, it, what, I, he made so many people so mad, but then now, especially when you look back, you're like, he was actually. I mean, I, and I think if you gave truth serum to a lot of Democrats, it'd be like, yeah, you know, he's right. He's like, right. The economy was gangbusters. Yeah. And the yeah, we we were like pretty much like, no, we're not going to fight any wars. All you a holes elsewhere on the globe, keep your shit together. We're yeah. not going to f around. And everybody was like, okay, okay. Russia was like, all right, yeah, we'll leave Ukraine alone. Well, they, China they, wasn't, wasn't threatening Taiwan. Yeah. You know, they weren't doing stupid stuff in the Middle East. Like, everybody was like, okay, yeah, th this guy, it, we don't know what to think of him. You know, it, he just might be crazy enough to blow us off the map. Yeah. Let's let's just sit back Which, and, 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 and mind our own business. Well, the two things I do think about with that is, one, if he gets in there at this time, there's no worry of re-election. So I'm like, so I feel like the gloves may come off, like even more so. Maybe, but I, I, part of me is like, I don't know that he was ever, like obviously he wanted to get re-elected, but like, I don't, don't, I don't know, know that it hindered him much. any filter to begin with. Like, yeah, well, that's like, true. Like, yeah. Because everybody's like, man, they need a, like an intern that's like in charge of his phone, like Just to not let him yeah, tweet. Don't tweet, yeah. <laughs> but like, but no, I mean, that, that was him. Like he, yep. you knew like, because with Biden, nobody believes anything coming out of the White House is truly Biden. Like, now, when it was Trump, that was, it was, well, and I, nothing was filtered. Nothing was having to go through a press team. I've like, always liked that. I yeah. like to know what I'm getting with a guy. Yeah. Like, I don't want you to be blowing a bunch of smoke to me. I want to know what I'm getting. Once again, it's, it's, even the most diehard Democrat out there is going to have to admit to you, Biden is a puppet. Mm -hmm. He's a puppet for whoever, you know. He don't even know us, what's going you know, on. Is it, oh, it's just. Obama's pulling all the strings still. I don't know who it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, or it's the big money donors, you know, and I think that's probably more likely or whoever, but yeah, it ain't Biden ain't the one making any decisions. No, no. He, so, he, he does not decide what, you know, you know, pattern on his depends. That he gets on <laughs> yeah. Like, like, 
No, but I don't think he is aware of anything. So what's your, you got the company tonight? I, I, I've got one we can do. It's one we mentioned kind of briefly a couple weeks ago whenever I was having to come in remote. Okay. Um, but didn't officially make it our company. And that's uh, the Stratus rain gauge. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, my my ultra precise rain gauge I've got there um, on the fence out behind the house. Um, had uh, about 1.7 inches this, this past rain event. We really? Had. More rain than we had gotten in like the last two and a half months. <laughs> um, there yeah. about a, what was that about a 24, 36 hour period? That was the kind of. That was the kind of rain. rain on Saturday and then it rained again on Monday. Yeah. Yep. That's the kind of rain you wish for right in the middle of growing season. Oh, yeah. Like a slow, well, steady I, rain. I mean, I, which we had good rains all growing season, but then I wish we had gotten that rain about the first of September. Yeah. Or mid September, even. Because yeah, we got that rain and then we got a freeze, a hard freeze, like 48 hours later. So yeah. Like, it was way too late to do anything for our pastures. Um, yeah, I'm feeding hay. Like, really? I'm. I'm I, I, they're not like full blown eating hay, um, but I, I've I've had to start feeding hay. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. Stratus rain gauge made in USA. Yes, they're made in USA. All right. Well, guys, we hope you enjoyed the Halloween episode. Uh, don't forget, go to agzaga dot com. Use that code Talk Dirt, all one word, all caps. On top of their sales, you get get an additional ten percent off. So go and do that and leave us a rating and a review. Always appreciate that. We appreciate everybody that entered in the giveaway. We had a, a great turnout on the giveaway and uh, be watching because we'll definitely keep, we'll keep doing that. That was, that was yeah, cool. We'll, we'll do another one, which we need to. I mean, we did that one because, well, because of the listeners, they, yep. they, they gave us the reviews, um, the ratings, whatever, um, all the above. So let's we'll come up with a. Um, we'll set some milestones we hit, and then we'll unlock yeah. the next giveaway. Yeah, we'll we'll come up with something. Hey, email us your ideas for what our next goal should be. Yep. Um If we surpass Joe Rogan in <laughs> downloads, if we surpass Joe Rogan, we can probably give away like a tractor. <laughs> yes, that's true. Because at that point, I mean, what's this deal with Spotify? Like ninety million, a hundred, yeah, hundred million or something. So at that point, we'll give away. We can afford it, to buy. Like it'll a, probably be um, one of the one of the the toys on Agzaga. <laughs> one of those tractors. <laughs> no, no, no. No, if we if we surpass Joe Rogan, I don't even know what his downloads are. Oh, it's if we crazy. Hit number one on all the across all genres. We'll like buy general, someone an R series John Deere tractor. Yeah. 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 Bobby Lee will give you his house. Maybe an X9. There you go, an X9, X9 combine. combine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if we got to that point, that there you go, guys. So if somebody wants to win an X9 combine, y'all need to get us to like, I don't know, I think he gets like 20 million downloads a month. So we're just right there behind him. So you guys get us to about 22 million downloads a month. We'll just, we'll get somebody X9 combine. Yeah, go, go ahead and I mean, I mean, I'll Time enter stamp this like we're I'll enter that giveaway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We might have some home cooking on that. One. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah, guys. There, will, there will not be a disclaimer that we can't win. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, all right, guys. We appreciate y'all. We'll catch you next week. Yep.